So here, oh, and the other thing I'd include in here because I couldn't find any references to it, but his father already owns almost 200,000 acres right next to where he just bought land. So between him and Reverend Moon and, and all these guys, they're building up their little their little shop down there. Um, so let's see here. Uh, George Bush signs HR 5122, which is the John Warner Defense Authorization Act. What that did is that that uh, bypassed the Posse Comitatus Act, which forbade U.S. military from operating on U.S. soil. Well, it wasn't too long after that that everything changed. Uh, here's when November of 2006, when video when uh, YouTube was bought by Google. Uh, November 19th, 2006, Bush meets with look, look at this doofus. Okay. <laughs> look at this, he's even embarrassed. He's like, God, why am I pictured here with this guy? Yeah. Um, so look at these robes they're wearing. Yeah, okay. Look at that symbol on the robe. What do you oh, see in that symbol? Please. You see that. Why is the president of Russia wearing an eagle over a pyramid? The same with China. The the topic for the meeting that day was counterterrorism measures against infectious disease and energy security. I'm sorry. Do you mind going back up to that picture one more time? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So. Here you got these guys all wearing the same thing. We're, it looks like they just got a, some sort of weird meeting or something, maybe sacrificing cats or something. Like <laughs> but uh, Bush looks like he just got done eating something. I mean, he's got that funny look on his face. You know how Bush is. He just told a lie. Yeah. Uh, I like how no one looks excited except for Bush. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, with the big boys now. <laughs> <laughs> so here you got these guys. Um, Television. So in 2007, the report card on America's infrastructure was released by the, uh, the uh, engineers. Uh, so in 2001, we had 364 dams that were in high hazard areas needing repair. As of 2007, uh, it's up to 1,743. So they're basically just saying, screw the dams, we don't, we don't need them, they're not going to survive anyway. So they're not repairing them. Um, Oh, what's that? The number of pages. Yeah. So basically, they're not doing anything to fix the, the dam. So we won't need them anyway when we're all drowned. <laughs> That's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah. So um, let's see here. Where was I? Uh, let's see here. Okay. So the South Pole Telescope, we built this thing, which is a um, microwave millimeter telescope built <coughs> on South Pole. Um, they really haven't been talking so much about that. You know how much they talk about Hubble and all that? Well, they don't talk about these other telescopes very much because they don't want people to ask what they're for. Um, so, <coughs> let's see here. Okay, George Bush drafts the NSPD-51, presidential director, which uh, gives power to him to base, or the president, to basically uh, impose complete and utter rule over the American people and take over all government functions. Um, so that was done by Bush. <coughs> Let's see here. All right, now this is really interesting. July 17th of 2007, you'll notice 777 in there. The Vatican closes down its library that's been open to the public for over 500 years, okay? And they closed down their library, okay? It's got people up in arms because people had to rush around like mad to try and collect all this information before they closed it down. And it's not expected to reopen until September of this year. Uh, or expected before, so th they're not even telling you when it's going to reopen. They're just saying it's not going to open before September this year. Um, they had to bring in extra chairs and all that for, for the people because they they uh, there was a, fl a mass rush of people to get there to try and get as much as information as possible. So they closed down the Vatican Library. Um, to me, it's, you know, it's amazing they closed down a 500-year library uh, and then just you know, oh well, big deal. So, uh, let's see here, September 11th, um, Russia tests the largest conventional weapon called the father of all bombs. That was about as big as a nuke, but it was a, a conventional weapon. Fe uh, February 28th, Neil Bush meets with the president of Paraguay, Sung Young Moon's son, and Neil Bush. Uh, uh, that's George's brother. That's George's brother, Neil. Did he have a connection with the Twin yeah. Trade Tower? Yes, yes, he was involved in Nor uh, SecureCom. Yeah, it was Okay, so he was involved with SecureCom. He was also, uh, he was also, which is unique, not many people, this is something I remember when I was a kid. Remember when Reagan got shot? Okay, when I was, a, when, I, when Reagan got shot and I was a kid, I was watching the news when it happened. And all of a sudden, they were at the hospital, the, the, the news and all that, the doors open up, 
and George Bush comes out. He's got his shirt undone, his tie undone, his hair's all messed up. And the first reporter sticks a camera in his face and says, Mr. Bush, what is, what is the truth about your son having lunch with John Hinckley's brother today? And he goes, I ain't got time for conspiracy theories. Our president's in there dying. And he pushed the guy off the side. And then nothing was ever said about it again. Okay, well, it is a fact that that guy right there had lunch with the guy's brother who shot Reagan that day that Reagan was shot. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. that's that's a fact you can look up. Um, and Hinckley Sr. was a neighbor of Bush Sr. Yeah, there was, there's a lot of connections there. Houston. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, let's see here. The Dutch are preparing for a catastrophe. Fox News tried to run a story about it, but they decided, I guess, maybe they decided they didn't want the public to hear it. Superstitions. <laughs> All right, so we should move on to another uh, situation. Look what happens when she tries to tell you. Where apparently, they are preparing for the apocalypse. Yeah, they won't have to pray. After 2012, it's all going to be over. I thought we were all concerned about 2000. Mm -hmm. Right. Wasn't that the case? Millennium, yes. So yeah. what, what exactly is happening in 2012? They're, they're pretty specific about what it. What do they think is going to happen? The impending end of civilization. So they're buying. <laughs> <laughs> and they blocked the whole thing out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Their point of view that they wouldn't be so upset if, in fact, everything came to an end just four years ago. So later. basically, you never got to hear what she told you. This is crazy. So basically, you got Fox with that news story about the Dutch preparing for Tuesday. On October 1st, 2008, the Northern Command deployed 6,000 U.S. troops on U.S. soil for the first time since the 1800s. Um, helping people at home, they become a permanent part of the active army. Helping people. Yeah, helping Help people. people. Okay. Well, this is right out of the Army <laughs> Times website. Okay. Um, so basically, here's all, like I said, I highlight all the important parts in red. Um, so the 6,000 troops on U.S. soil. Then on October 2nd, 2008, Congress is threatened with martial law. Eddie uh, from Ohio. The only way they can pass this bill is by <coughs> creating and sustaining a panic atmosphere. That atmosphere is not justified. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or 3,000 points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. Yes. Unjustified, proven wrong. We've got a week, we've got two weeks to write a good bill. The only way to write, to pass a bad bill, keep the panic pressure on. Now, what has the Senate done to this bill? So that's basically, they were threatened with martial law. And then, uh, sure, uh, still alive. <laughs> and then the next day, the, sure. uh, the stock market crashes. It, in fact, between 10-3 uh, and 10-10, that thing drops almost 2,000 points. Uh, basically, because what's happened is they created all this unlimited funds since then. They've been trying to pile scam on top of scam on top of scam on top of scam and it's just it's getting to a point where it can't sustain itself anymore. Uh, so basically you had the market crash and then uh, on December tw uh, 2008 Northern Command raises its troop levels from 6,000 to 20,000. Okay, this is right out of the Washington Post. The U.S. military expects to have 20,000 uniformed troops inside by, by 2011. Um, or other domestic catastrophe, whatever they want to say. But uh, so they raised the troop levels up to 20,000. Uh, let's see here. They launched the Panoramic Telescope and Response System, which is a rapid response system. Its primary mission is to detect near-Earth objects that threaten to cause impact events. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that kind of got under the radar. Now, June of this year, the military has now classified space rocks top secret. Okay. Astronomers used to have all this access to these information, but now you can no longer get access to this information because asteroids and comets are now classified top secret. <laughs> okay, so um, like I said, this is right out of MSNBC. All the links for the articles are at the bottom. Um, so now that's the, that's uh, classified. 
Uh, let's hear. We all heard about Climate Gate. I'm like, okay, that's a whole conspiracy in itself, but. Uh...